Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Oh my god, I feel so cosy and comfy in this like really nice fluffy teddy bear jumper. Well, kind of have a confession to make. I actually purchased this off Misguided. So it is a girl's jumper dress, but I saw it and I was like, I need back my life. So today with me, I have 20 skincare products that I will never ever buy again. And not necessarily mean they are kind of, well, they are bad products really. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that some of the products that I have are from brands that I actually really, really do like and enjoy using. It's just that particular product hasn't worked well for my skin or I didn't like the consistency or anything like that really. And yeah, and some products as well that I just absolutely do not agree with the brand. So it's a little bit of juicy juiciness for you. Do I need to make this brighter? Is that better? That is better, isn't it? And so the first two products are from a brand that I really do actually like and have enjoyed using their products. And I do have huge amounts of respect for them, especially how they've handled their recent controversy. And now that is a little kind of hint to what products I have. So I have with me the Centella Green Level Safe Sun by Perito and also their Comfy Butter Sunblock. So especially this product, I absolutely fell head over heels for. However, because it is actually not an SPF 50, it's kind of a product that I wouldn't buy again with this formula. Until they reformulate this into a higher SPF, hopefully an SPF 50 as marketed on the products, then I won't be purchasing Perito sunscreens. And now moving on to the next skincare product that I will never ever buy again. And it actually is another sunscreen product that was kind of like wrapped up and embroiled in the controversy. And that is the Keep Cool Soothe Bamboo Sun Essence. And I will not buy this product again because one, it isn't the SPF 50 rating. And also two, I have absolutely no respect for Keep Cool as a brand. The way they handled the whole situation of the controversy, they went about it the complete opposite way than Perito did. Perito had the utmost decency and respect and really sort of like cared about their consumers and sort of their fans as well. Whereas Keep Cool <laughs> were threatening influencers and also our skincare enthusiast community. Then moving on to the next skincare products that I will not be purchasing again. And these two products actually kind of follow the same method and the same application on the skin. However, um, they are kind of two different products. Um, but I've got both here, the Aldi Micellar and Hyaluronic Daily Cleansing Pads, and then I've got the Aldi Glycolic Exfoliating Pads. Now, I'm not sure which dupe this is from, but I know this is a nip and fab dupe. And with this one, it's kind of like a makeup wipe. And I don't really know why I purchased these like maybe about a year ago or something like this, because I've not used makeup wipes for a few years or a couple years. And they just, I don't know, I really don't know what I was thinking with this. I was like, oh, hyaluronic acid, I need that. And then with these, the glycolic acid pads, they really just didn't do anything for my skin. I kind of just, yeah, I didn't see any improvement on my skin texture or my skin tone. And I'd rather just use like a glycolic acid toner or a serum or even something in a cleanser. And then the next product that I will never be purchasing again is the Simple Express Glow Clay Polish. And so now I am a huge Simple fan. I just, I love the affordability of it. I love the no fuss ingredients. And some products have worked incredibly well for my skin, but this was such a letdown. And obviously it is an exfoliating facial scrub, which is the, you know, the, one of the reasons why I would just not be purchasing products like this again, that are facial exfoliating scrub. You know, a chemical exfoliant kind of gal. So this product was really gritty. It does have the bamboo scrubs. Um, as that, you know, that exfoliating particles. It has ginger root, vitamin E, vitamin C, and natural bentonite clay. So without the bamboo scrubs, I actually wouldn't mind this product. Um, however, again, I still probably wouldn't repurchase it. It kind of just did nothing for my skin. I think I maybe only used it a couple of times or something like that. Um, it just wasn't suited for my skin type whatsoever. And then the next skincare product that I will not be purchasing again is the Hylamide High Efficiency Face Cleanser. So I do love Hylamide. The products that I have tried, apart from this one, has have been amazing, amazing for my skin. The 
they're really affordable and just like high quality innovative formulas. But this is the application just, oh, it is not for me. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's cleaning your skin. And I'm not saying that in terms of it's not foaming up or it's not lathering up. Well, it isn't, you know, it isn't doing that. It just kind of doesn't spread at all over your face. The, that is the reason why I will not be repurchasing this product. And I have kind of used only, God, I really haven't used a lot of this whatsoever. That is so bad. But it's just a product that I tried multiple different uses of. I tried on its own and also incorporating into another water-based cleanser anything like that and it just didn't do anything. And then following on with the theme of cleansers, I have the La Roche-Posay Effecular Micro Peeling Purifying Gel for Persistent Imperfections. With this cleanser, I just felt it was far too harsh for my face. Like I have combination skin, I have quite resilient skin as well. Oh God, I got something on my nose, man. So I have quite resilient skin and I can handle quite like most like really foamy cleansers and quite harsh cleansers as well. But this was far too, what am I trying to say? I don't know, I've lost it now. <laughs> harsh, that's it, harsh. And then we've also got another cleanser. Oh my God, I've actually got loads of cleansers in here. And so with me, I have the Cosrx Triple Hyaluronic Moisturizing Cleanser. It has hyaluronic acid in there and it also has Pro Vitamin B5. So I was really, really excited for this cleanser and just to try it out. I love Cosrx, Cosrx products, um, but I was so disappointed with this. Like this, even though I do have resilient skin, it left my face like setting concrete. Like I just put a bentonite clay mask on it and I was like, oh, I thought this was supposed to be moisturizing. It has hyaluronic acid in there. It has pro vitamin B5 in there. What is it doing? <laughs> But yeah, this was just far too drying for my skin. And then moving on to a serum, which I will never ever purchase again. And that is the Verst Just Brief Clarifying Serum. So at first, I really, really did like um, everything about this product. But the more times I used it, I was just like, what? Is it actually doing to my skin more as i like sort of like delved into this as a skincare brand i just really didn't agree with their marketing whatsoever i really really don't like it when brands fear monger consumers into thinking that parabens are bad alcohol is bad sulfates are bad you know it's just not what we want in society and we don't want to be putting fear into people's minds about certain ingredients that one the consumers don't really understand because they're not cosmetic chemists they're not scientists and also the brand they don't really know either so it's just one of those things where cut the fear mongering and then you'd be good and also another brand that i am just not vibing with whatsoever and that is glossier so this is their milky jelly cleanser and for the life of me i actually can't really remember what i've tried from glossier i've definitely tried quite like a handful of products from theirs i know i have the future juice serum which is kind of like that makeup but no makeup skincare products it's just basically like a highlighter i just was really disappointed with this and kind of really underwhelmed by this product if you have like cerave and then you have this kind of cerave wins hands down and speaking of CeraVe I have a product that I will not be purchasing from them again <laughs> uh, so this is their facial moisturizing lotion the UK version and it's their SPF 25 AM moisturizer and the reasons why I do not like this product is that for one the feel on the skin is it's just not for me whatsoever. It feels slimy and greasy and really heavy, but kind of like not that typical sunscreen feeling. It kind of feels just, oh, does not sit well on the skin whatsoever. And also it's an SPF 25, like I want an SPF 30. Ideally I want an SPF 50, but I'll take an SPF 30. I just think with moisturizing lotions that also have that added SPF in them, like, Consumers are just not going to apply the appropriate amount of sunscreen that is required and especially throughout the day as well. Like I just think kind of keep it on its own, keep a moisturiser as a moisturiser and a sunscreen as a sunscreen. And then moving on to the next product which I think is going to be a very controversial opinion and I do apologise in advance but at the end of the day, skincare is personal and if it's if I don't like a product, I'm not going to lie about it and say I like it because I don't and that would be really bad of me. So I've got the Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant in the mini version. Yes, 
My head is not that big. Well, it is big, but it's not that big. So yeah, I just think this is far too expensive for what it is. I was just so underwhelmed at this product that I just, it just kind of didn't give me the results that I wanted and I was hoping for, especially on so many other people's reviews and kind of seeing all the hype from this product from Paula's Choice. It just really, yeah, I was just like, I don't get it. And then we have some ordinary products which I will never ever buy again. And the first one is the Grenactive Retinoid 5% in Squally. So I was so underwhelmed by this product. I just thought it's gonna transform my skin. I'm gonna be looking amazing. And then obviously I wasn't because it just does absolutely nothing for you. It'll be really good for sensitive skin types and for dry skin types but I honestly wouldn't rely on it for your retinoid benefits anyway. And then the next product I have is the Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%, I thought it was 2% but it's 1%. This bottle has gone black just because I was doing a little experiment. There's no Niacinamide in there whatsoever. But yeah, this product actually did transform my skin when I first started using it. And I went through multiple, multiple bottles of the Ordinary Niacinamide. However, I just kind of got bored of the product and I moved on to the Inca List and the Face Fairy and other different skincare products with Niacinamide in the formulations. So it's just a product that I kind of will not be reaching out for because Niacinamide is so big now that you, you can find it in every skincare product out there. And then next we have a really interesting product actually. And I kind of really did like like this product and then when I woke up I really didn't like this product. And that is the Origins Drink Up Intensive Overnight Mask to Quench Skin's First. So I really did enjoy the application. I enjoyed the thickness of this, especially for an overnight mask. I just thought, oh yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I'm not gonna be dehydrated anymore. I'm gonna be really like smooth and nourished and soft. And it, this broke me out like a bitch. Actually, another product that really did upset my skin was the Garnier Organics Fresh Lemongrass Detox Gel Wash. So at first, I really, really did enjoy using this, but over time, it was just like setting off my dermatitis on my skin, like especially around my nose, um, which I haven't had a flare up in such a long time. I'm so happy. But yeah, this was something in this just really did upset it and just make it flared up and oh, itchiness, redness, soreness, and then loads of spots around it. It was just, and now moving on to the last three products that I will not be purchasing it again. And so the first one is the Dr. Dennis Gross Hyaluronic Marine Moisturizer. So this um, is a really sort of like really nice watery gel-like consistency moisturizer, but it is pretty much the exact same as Neutrogena Hydra Boost. How it feels, the smell of it, the look of it, it looks exactly the same. And I would rather purchase the Neutrogena one at a fraction of the price than spend 50 or pound on this one for the same results. And then we have the Revolution Skincare Niacinamide Mattifying Cream. So this I'm really interested in because it has niacinamide in there. It kind of is like this really, not not too thick, but not too lightweight cream as well. So I thought, oh yeah, this is gonna be absolutely perfect. Really nice and cooling on the skin. Kind of really doesn't smell nice whatsoever, but there is no added fragrance in there. Um, however, again, this product broke me out. I was just like, oh my God, this is such a disappointment. I was just like, oh. And it's really interesting actually, because I have the Eslake Acid Cream from Revolution, which is more of a thicker, richer moisturizer, and it didn't break me out. And I actually really, really do love this moisturizer. And then last but not least, but so least that it is in my top 20, I will not be purchasing again. And it comes to a lot of people's surprise, but it's the CeraVe Hydrating Cream to Foam Cleanser. So this is their latest cleanser to launch from CeraVe, both in the US and also in the UK. And the only reason why I will not be buying this again is just that I kind of find it difficult to incorporate into my routine. I don't really kind of reach for it on my skincare shelf in my bathroom. I would either want to have the hydrating cleanser by CeraVe or the foaming cleanser by CeraVe or the salicylic acid one. I just don't really see a place in this and I just kind of think maybe CeraVe 
created this cleanser because there was so much hype from their salicylic acid cleanser, but yet so much hype for their hydrating cleanser as well. And so that is all from the 20 skincare products I will never be purchasing again. Please do let me know down below if you have spotted any skincare products from this video that you do not like or you do like because it's great to have a discussion and basically just find out what everyone likes and what everyone doesn't like because yeah skincare is very personal so i really do hope you enjoyed this video please do give it a massive thumbs up and also subscribe if you are new here and i will see you very very soon for a brand new one see you later guys bye bye